This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. Funding for this program is provided by the Santa Rosa Island Authority, located on beautiful Pensacola Beach, Florida. Featuring a wide variety of shopping and entertainment venues, fresh from the Gulf seafood, spectacular lodging, brilliant white sand beaches, and wildlife encounters. Pensacola Beach, waiting for you and your family to explore. On the horizon, its profile is unmistakable. A giant World War II era battleship surrounded by an equally impressive array of aircraft, naval vessels, and fighting machines. This collection of military history is called Battleship Memorial Park. And if you happen to be traveling along the northern shore of Mobile Bay, you'll discover it right in your own backyard. This park was created in, in 19, opened in 1965 and is a memorial to all branches of the United States Armed Forces, so Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine, Coast Guard, you're gonna see here. And uh, uh, highlighted by one large vessel named Battleship USS Alabama, which is ironically uh, one of only four National Historic Landmarks in Mobile. The ship was actually, it's a pretty interesting story. There were some local Mobilians that um, heard their namesake was gonna be scrapped. The Alabama was actually sitting in mothballs in Bremerton, Washington. They were actually going to scrap the ship for the parts. Well, a local group got together and decided one to try to save their namesake. So they actually went to the school children of Alabama first. And those school children donated their milk money and their ice cream money, which at the time was, you know, nickels and dimes and, and quarters. And those kids actually raised um, right, right at $100,000. And this was in the, in the late 50s, early 60s that this took place. And it did take some additional corporate money uh, to finance the tow. It was a million dollars is what it cost to tow, to tow the ship from Bremerton, Washington to where we sit now. It was a 5,600 mile tow, and it's still the longest non-military mile tow in history. It came to the Panama Canal with just inches to spare. Interesting thing was that the stipulation of the, the uh, federal legislation to, to allow this ship to come here was that it had to be done before June the 1st, 64, because that was the start of hurricane season. The ship gets here, uh, they renovated it, they built the park. Actually, the, the 175 acres of Battleship Park is from the first 75 acres were from the dredge material just dra dredging the channel to bring the Battleship where she is today. This is a World War II ship that actually was active during World War II. Um, she's got a pretty good career. Uh, she actually has, uh, she earned nine battle stars. She had a short life, uh, only 37 months of active duty during World War II. Was brought here to where we sit now on Mobile Bay. Was brought here September of 64 and we opened to the public 1965. Over 13 million visitors have walked up this gangway to tour the Alabama. There's a lot to see. The ship is nearly 700 feet long and 20 stories high. The hard part is deciding where to start. This is the start of the tour entrance right here. This has been cut out obviously because the visitors coming in and out, but it would have had a hatch that came up about so high, watertight hatch. This has all been modified for the public. Down below here are some of the access trunks that they use for accessing uh, cargo and equipment up and down. Uh, it goes down about four flights. Okay, we're going to go downstairs here and see some of the cool stuff. You see this is some of the watertight hatches I was telling you about. You see these all throughout the ship. This is the shipboard welding hookups where the welders would, uh, you need something welding down below here, you just hook up to it and start welding and we're actually still using the original equipment today. 
I'll show you this right through here. This is how some the bunks were set up. Give you an idea of uh, what they had to go through. You can see exactly how tight the quarters were. This is only this is where we have our scout overnight groups. But the bunks and everything is original to the ship. The padding is not, but you know. And most of all these bunks were like four high. This is one of the uh, main scouting areas here. Used to be the main Marine detachment. Uh, Boy Scout groups, Girl Scout groups, RA groups, church groups come on board and stay in uh, these bunks. And uh, the kids actually love it. They get to run the ship after hours. And they have a blast. This is history. You know, you don't see this all the time. These are original lockers. Each person would have had, would have, had a personal locker. And that's uh, where you see here. This is one of the rooms here. We're actually in the process of scraping and painting now. You see all the walls have been scraped down, getting ready for paint. Uh, this room alone will probably take my crew about three weeks to finish. I have people ask me all the time, how long does it take to paint the ship? I've been doing it over 20, 20 years and I ain't finished it yet. It's a vicious cycle. You paint it, come back, paint it, it's just over and over. This was just painted about two years ago and you see all the paint flaking off now. Uh, we get a lot of volunteer help through the Pensacola Navy base and just area volunteers that come over and help us and we, without them we really couldn't do it. Right here is one of our newly refurbished radio rooms. The radio, some of the radios that you see here, one of the original crew members came here and actually got these things working. So these are actually working units. To have a guy that come back after all these years that loves the ship that much to actually put more work back into it for the public to come to see it is unreal. This is actually the start of the medical one of the main doctor's offices here. This has all been refurbished. Before we had bars, took the bars out, replaced it with the doors, put glass in, and it looks, makes a much better display. This is for moving heavy equipment. They had a, a monorail system. These things were all through the sick bay, and they would actually, ha they have a rail, um, a dolly, that went on these here, and they'd actually push it all the way through, moving heavy equipment through. And these were all through the ship like this. They had limited access, so when they had to move equipment to the forward, they actually actually used these monorail systems to get to the forward because this stuff's so heavy. This is the main sick bay area right here. Some of the medical bunks. Put the bunks in so you can actually see what they had back there in the day, back there in the 40s. If you've seen it before, you would you'd be amazed at what work we done in here because this is all bars that went through the entire place. We removed the bars and then installed glass. You see what kind of the surgical instruments they had back during the day compared to some of the stuff we have now. It's kind of scary. This is an isolation ward. You know, if somebody got a stomach virus and affect the entire ship, so they were placed in here. Can you imagine 2,500 sailors with a stomach virus? Oh my gosh. And no ship should be without the dentist office. And this is all being refurbished. I would just like to have your tooth pulled during a 30 foot seas. <laughs> this ship actually went through a tsunami. And they said they had waves crashing up to the up to as tall as a bridge, 100 foot waves. This is the uh, part of the number two main gun turret, 16 inch gun turret. These are 2,700 pound projectiles, armor piercing rounds. These are 1,900 pounds fragment rounds. This is 1,900 pounds here, 2,700 pounds there. This is the main uh, number one engine room. You can see down in here to the main turbine, the steam turbine. And this steam was superheated, 750 degrees. I had uh, some of the old guys that served in here they'd have to go around checking for steam leaks with the broom handle. I uh, said, so broom handle? They'd actually 
run the broom handle over the piping. He said when the broom handle fell over, you know that's where the leak was. It actually cut the broom handle in two. If you walk past it, that steam could actually cut you in half. So Bill, when we walk onto the ship, we walk through the tour entrance. This right. is the first area that we see. The first area that you see is gonna be an exhibit area that actually takes you from ship construction all the way through uh, the, ex the experiences of Battleship Alabama in World War II. And uh, you can see with uh, some illustrations here, but primarily the thing that, that you, you grasp when you walk in is that Alabama is a, a big ship. She's 680 feet long, she's 194 feet tall. She weighs right now about 70 million pounds, but could go 32 miles an hour. And uh, we're standing in here about right here okay. right now. Just kind of give you an idea, but uh, people have the opportunity to go down three levels or up eight more levels from where we are. I guarantee you, a, you can't get a gym that's gonna give you this kind of walk, workout. Bill, it takes a lot to keep the ship going today. It took a oh. lot to run it in its day, right? Now let's talk about what it took to get it started. Well, just uh, the keel was laid February the 1st of 1940. Over 30 months later, over 3,000 men and women working 24 hours a day commissioned this ship on August 16, 1942 at a cost of then about $80 million. You can only imagine what it is now. Turned it over to a crew of 2,500 that manned this ship. Today, we've got in total in the park 37 employees that do the same job that those guys did. So she's always been a lot of maintenance and a lot of labor intensity. If you want to chip and paint, I guarantee you that. 500 gallons to paint the outside, about 4,000 gallons to paint the inside. And how often do you uh, do that? Not very often. <laughs> Uh, Battleship Alabama had two primary roles. The shore bombardment was, was her principal role. They shot a very large, a 2,700 pound projectile that would go 20.97 miles and, and could hit a dime with great accuracy. Of course, you'd never find a dime. But her primary role as it evolved was that she actually provided uh, air support and anti-aircraft uh, support for the carrier groups that, that she would travel with. The battleship actually shot down 22 aircraft, which is hard for people to believe. Her first service was in North Atlantic, uh, protecting the Russian and the British fleets, and we are the only ship that was ever honored by the USSR for our participation in, in defending her ships. She, in mid-43, came back to, got a new paint job, went to the South Pacific and earned nine battle stars. Alabama's got a great story of history. Uh, the day after the truce was signed and, and uh, surrender documents were signed in, 19, in 1945, she actually led the American fleet into Tokyo Harbor the day after those documents were signed. So we always call her the heroine of, of the South Pacific, but she's a great lady and 6,533 guys actually served on that ship and everyone a hero just like every other person that's defended our country. Battleship Park consists of 175 acres located just minutes from historic downtown Mobile. The site is anchored by the USS Alabama, but features a variety of other attractions, including an enormous aircraft pavilion, displays of tanks and artillery, gift shop, veterans memorials, the battle-decorated World War II submarine USS Drum, and a wide assortment of other military craft, ranging from a Vietnam-era river patrol boat to a B-52 bomber. Guests are encouraged to plan at least a two-hour visit in order to fit it all in. I would spend at least a minimum of two hours. You're going to spend about an hour and a half going through the, the battleship. There's 12 of the 17 uh, levels or decks of the battleship are open. Uh, there, as you can go through the submarine, it's going to take about 30 minutes. Come through this building, gosh, we've had people that show up at 8 o'clock and leave at 4 in the afternoon. But we open every morning at, at uh, 8 o'clock except for Christmas Day and close uh, at varying hours uh, depending on the time of the year. But uh, it's a great experience because you're walking around and through artifacts that there aren't anywhere in the world. This, this park is completely and totally unique in as far as it represents all the services and not just one. So a little bit for everybody here and top it off with a ride in a flight simulator and good rock and roll ride for anybody. Just for anybody who doesn't have the time to physically tour the battleship or take two hours or so to see what we have inside the ships and the aircraft pavilion. They can ride around the park. We've got 13 planes outside highlighted by uh, a B-52 bomber that uh, served admirably in Vietnam. We've got uh, helicopters, we've got uh, 15 uh, tanks and field pieces out there that represent uh, the Army. 
But uh, so you get a real tour for the $2 park use fee. That's this charge per vehicle, not per person, just if you want to just come in and ride around. Uh, there's a, we actually are, one of our aircraft is actually a, a Russian MiG-17 that was used in, in uh, the Korean War. So uh, you're gonna find, you're gonna see a little bit of everything. Additionally, outside, we've got uh, the Korean War Memorial, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. We've got 1,213 names on our Vietnam Veterans Memorial, 752 on the, on the Korean Memorial. In this building, we just uh, reinstalled a wall of honor for all 9,000 583 Alabamians that have died in combat from the start of, of World War I all the way to the 20th century. We've got uh, a couple of Coast Guard vessels because there are actually three Coast Guard bases in Mobile. So we're very proud of the Coast Guard presence in our area and uh, honor them by showing the displaying not only a couple of their, uh, their boats, but uh, also a couple of their aircraft as well. One of the most unique exhibits at the park is a replica of the CSS Hunley, a hand-cranked Civil War submarine. The neat thing about the Hunley is that uh, 150 years ago almost, they, they created the submarine to go under the water, which there's a spar on the, on the front of the submarine that actually has a, a detonating device or a bomb or a torpedo, whichever you'd like to say. And the idea was that these guys, there's nine men inside there that are pedaling, and they ram this thing into a side of the ship with a barb on the end so it attaches. Then they backpedal as fast as they can and detonate as they're, they're exiting. So it's a really kind of like, like, what does that do? Because it obviously couldn't shoot torpedoes like the World War II submarines, but kind of interesting when people walk up and say, what the heck is that? But this thing is only 40 feet long. It's incredibly small. I had the opportunity to see the real Hunley and I can tell you, it, that's not a pleasant experience to think what those guys did. The, the creator of the Hunley actually had, uh, we uh, understand there are three submarines out in Mobile Bay that, uh, that did not uh, pass their test. And so uh, if you just think about the, the guys that volunteered to do this, that, uh, I mean, how, how ludicrous to think 150 years ago that we're gonna build this, this thing that's gonna go underneath the water with no propulsion other than us. The Hunley is dwarfed, though, by the USS Drum, which sank 15 enemy ships in the Pacific during World War II. Over 300 feet long, the undersea vessel is displayed completely above ground, an engineering feat that has won several awards. She sat in the water behind or beside the battleship until 2001 when we took her out and put her on ground for the first time. And uh, everybody, even today, who had been here during that time will walk up the gangway and look over and says, where's the little boat? Well, the little boat is longer than a football field and it weighs 1,500 tons. And uh, I mean, it's a three million pound submarine sitting on land. And I can tell you, your viewers have never seen the bottom of a submarine and they can come to Mobile and see it. We've had submarine USS Drum since 1969 and actually the story was that uh, Naval Historical Center called the chairman of the Battleship Commission and says uh, hey uh, uh, we've got this submarine up here that's been decommissioned up here and, and a war hero from World War II and how would y'all like to have it? Chairman of the commission says well gosh I, we'd, I think we'd love to when do I need to let you know and he said well anytime before noon tomorrow will be fine and so we got the submarine and uh, she was dedicated July the 4th 1969 two of our four major artifacts, the battleship Alabama and submarine USS Drum are both World War II veterans. They're dinosaurs, if you want to call it that, because uh, they're not making submarines the, the way this diesel submarine was made or battleships. You're going to see paying the admission to come into and tour the ships. You're going to be able to go all the way through a nine Battlestar recipient battleship that, as I said, they're not making any more like it. Your, the submarine USS Drum is actually America's oldest existing submarine and actually has 12 battle stars and uh, was the first new submarine to get to Pearl Harbor uh, after December the 7th, 1941. You get to go through those to your heart's content. Plus come in the aircraft pavilion, we've got 25 historic aircraft that predate uh, World War II all the way to current use. So you're gonna be able to see that. The aircraft pavilion is a real treat for aviation buffs. Many types of military planes are on display, such as a P-51 Mustang similar to those flown by the Tuskegee Airmen, a Soviet MiG-17, and a supersonic, formerly super secret, Blackbird spy plane.
Bill, this plane is the A-12 Blackbird? Yeah, that's true. This is a, a one-pilot, one-seater that flies 3.23 Mach, which is about 2,100 miles an hour, at um, normally around 85, 90,000 feet, but could read a tag of a car with the cameras. It has no guns, no, no uh, ammunition, no nothing other than cameras camera bay used for reconnaissance. So one guy is in this, this huge aircraft. Yeah, and in fact, uh, the, the two, you see one engine here, the rest of the plane is made up of fuel to fly this thing because the, the plane itself is made out of titanium. It flies 88 minutes on a full tank of fuel, but uh, you can only imagine how fast at, at uh, 2,100 miles an hour it goes. Well, one of these aircraft flew from Los Angeles to New York in about 64 minutes. This plane actually is dedicated to an Alabama native by the name of Jack Weeks, and uh, Jack was the only person that died during the Vietnam War flying an aircraft like this uh, out over the, uh, the ocean. One of its engines flamed out, so it was never recovered. Uh, we found out after everything was declassified in 2007 that he was from the Birmingham area and went to school at the University of, of Alabama. And in 2008, on the 40th anniversary of his death, all his, all the guys that he knew that ran these programs, that the radar guys, the engineers, everything came to Mobile to celebrate for him. I mean, it's an incredible plane. I mean, everybody says, wow, look at that. This is it's just a supersonic a spy plane. You know, everybody should have one. Bill, this aircraft has quite a, quite a story. Oh, yes, yeah, sure. it just looks like a Navy rescue helicopter, but actually this Huey is, uh, was the last official naval flight of, of Hueys in, in the United States Navy, but it served from uh, the mid-60s until uh, the late 80s as Marine One. This, this aircraft actually flew Nixon, Presidents Nixon, Ford, Ford and Reagan, and we have it here on display and uh, in the process of restoring it back to what it looked like when, when uh, President Reagan flew it in the 80s. That's amazing to see some of the pictures that are, that are in front of this and see the President standing there with this aircraft. Oh, yeah. I mean, you just never think. You know that he travels around, and, and uh, but they normally would take uh, the Hueys on, on international trips because they were easier to carry. And so consequently, we've had this. It was actually flown in to us from uh, Fallon Naval Air Station, Nevada, about two years ago, and we've been slowly taking it back to what it would look like, including the Jelly Belly, the jelly belly uh, jar that, would, that President Reagan loved him evidently, so uh, consequently that will be in there as well. Well, that's a major piece of history right there. Oh, sure. And mm -hmm. it'll be right here in Mobile, Alabama. As I say, Marine One, and of course uh, our, our uh, Army veterans will be proud to say that before it was Marine One, it was actually Army One, so, uh, but that's all right. We're, we're restoring it as Marine One, and this is a great, great artifact, and, and I look forward to about six months from now to being exactly the way you see in those pictures. So it's important for America, and incidentally, we'll get about 8% of our business or around 20,000 visitors a year are international. So we're spreading the world literally all over the world. 50, every year we'll have 50 uh, states and anywhere from 70 foreign countries and up that will register that they visited here. But it's important for us to remember that, that America and freedom is not free and America's freedom is only going to be as strong as that effort to preserve that freedom and, and uh, what we would like to do on a continuing basis is for you know to develop programs and artifacts and displays that will certainly demonstrate that there's been a huge sacrifice on the, on the part of these folks for for our sake uh, economically uh, the battleship park uh, Locally, using the convention and visitors figures for last year, we had about a $30 million impact just on mobile visitation. 50% or more of our business comes from the Alabama beaches and the Florida beaches, so this is a, a huge economic uh, cycle or impact for, for this, not only our area, but for the state of Alabama. In a normal year, we'll do about 300,000 visitors. Our mission is to memorialize and honor all who have worn the, the uniform of the United States Armed Forces. Uh, our second mission is to educate American public, uh, 14 million of which have been to our, our park, to hopefully when they leave, they take something away of the sacrifices of those men and women that are even today are serving all over the world trying to protect our precious American freedom. Just look at the memories that have been created by 
coming to this park or going to the Naval Museum. I mean, it's, it's a, we're very blessed in our area to have two incredible uh, museums that really bring uh, war and, and the effort for peace alive. A lot of work, a lot of hard work, but you can see the outcome of what you do when it's done. I love it working here, meet a lot of great people, a lot of old guys that come on board here from different ships that have a lot of great stories. I try to get all the knowledge I can from them because they're dying off at an alarming rate and I try to pick their brain and get as much knowledge from them as possible, something we can use on board here. You know, you get to see the public enjoy it and uh, it pays off. Battleship Memorial Park is located just east of downtown Mobile within sight of the city skyline. Driving along Interstate 10, you literally can't miss it. Keep an eye out for the USS Alabama along the bayfront and exit south on Battleship Parkway, also known as U.S. Highways 90 and 98. We hope you've enjoyed this look at one of America's finest military parks. We'll see you again next time, right in your own backyard.